Yeah, hello everyone. Um, I'm Tobias, I'm one of the founders of Tandem, and I'm very happy to speak to you here uh, today. This is my third polyglot gathering. I've been to Bratislava last year and also um, to Berlin a couple of years ago. And I'm also speaking to you from Berlin, um, from my home, where I have spent most of my time in the last weeks, which I guess is similar for most of you, that you spent most of your time in the last weeks at home. Um, yeah, I actually thought when I looked at my picture here before that um, these conferences and giving talks at conferences are always a good occasion to get a haircut, but uh, yeah, not in these days. Um, I titled my talk Language Learning Around the World, and what I would actually like to do is I would like to show some facts and figures um, based on the usage of Tandem um, and also a recent study we did, a user study. So Tandem is a language exchange community. Um, we are currently counting 10 million members. Um, on Tandem, you can find language exchange partners. You can pick um, out of 300 languages, including 20 sign languages that you're speaking or learning. And here on this map, you see our top countries. Um, it's actually our 10 top countries. And most of this presentation will be about these top countries. So I'm just going to quickly name them. Um, it's um, China, Brazil, the US, Russia, Mexico, Germany, France, Italy, Turkey, and Japan. These are our top markets. And um, yeah, we're going to see quite a few maps uh, in this presentation and have a lot of fun with flags. Um, and for those who've never heard of Tandem and what Tandem does, um, so Tandem is a language exchange community. When you create an account, you can uh, set the languages that you're speaking and the ones that you want to learn. And then we show you people who speak the languages you learn and learn the languages you speak. And you can connect with them. And basically, the core of the experience then is a messenger. Just like WhatsApp or Telegram, you can send text messages, audio messages, uh, images. And there are a couple of language learning related features. You can translate messages, you can transliterate them, and you can correct each other's messages. And um, this looks a bit like here. Um, somebody sends you a message, and then you can actually um, uh, correct them, and the, uh, your exchange partner will see the correction. And last year in my presentation, I showed a slide that showed um, in which countries people correct most. And I looked at these numbers again, and I want to show it again. And this is the recent standings, and there's actually been some change in that list. So last year, Germans were actually world champions in correcting their exchange partners, but we switched position now with France, and Fr French are the new world champions in this category, uh, followed by the US and Italy. Mexico, Turkey, and Brazil actually also switched places, and same like Japan and Russia, and China um, is still at the bottom of this list. Um, yeah, we discussed last year a bit about where these uh, numbers could come from, and um, my hypothesis is that there's definitely a cultural component in it, especially um, in countries in Asia. It's maybe not considered so polite to correct other people, while in countries like French, uh, France and Germany, it's almost like obligatory and it's like uh, not helping someone in need if you don't correct them when they make a mistake in your native language. Um, yeah, and I got interesting feedback to this, uh, to this, these uh, facts, to this data last year, which was actually the starting point of digging a bit deeper and looking at other interesting data that we could get um, from our community. I want to start with what are the most popular languages in the Tandem community. Um, and here you see the top 10. There are actually not too many surprises. English is by far the most popular target language, the language that people want to learn. And second spot, one might guess it's Spanish, but it's actually German. But German, Spanish, and French are pretty close uh, to each other. Then we have Japanese and Korean, two Asian languages next, and followed by Italian, Russian, Chinese, and Portuguese. And um, in the second half, like the spots 11 to 20, it gets maybe a bit more interesting. Uh, we have languages like Dutch in 13th position, or also Swedish and Norwegian, which are not spoken by that many native speakers compared to, for example, Turkish or Arabic, um, but they seem to be very popular. Um, one of the reasons that we'll see a few times through this presentation is that a lot of, of the members of Tandem, the people who use Tandem, um, 
learn languages to um, to emigrate, to live in a different country, or already living in a country where they want to learn the language. And uh, I guess Scandinavian languages or languages are that, like Dutch are more popular there. Also very interesting in 19th position is the first sign language on the list. Um, so it's American Sign Language, and it's one of the top 20 uh, languages on Tandem. Now we want to look at the more, most popular languages in these 10 countries that I uh, showed you in the beginning. And here, also to no surprise, in most of the countries, the most popular target language is English, except for Germany. In Germany, it's actually German. And the reason is very probably that um, there are a lot of people using Tandem in Germany who live in Germany and want to learn the local language. It's the same reason probably in the US um, on why people in the US want to learn English. Um, next, we look at the second most popular target language. And here, the uh, picture is a bit more diverse. So um, in the US, it's Spanish. In Mexico, the second most popular is French. In, in Brazil, it's actually Spanish. In France, it's French. So the most popular in France was French, but the second one is the local language. Um, same in Italy. The most popular was English, but now the second most popular is Italian. In uh, Germany now, it's English after German was number one. In Turkey and in Russia, it's German. And in China and in Japan, it's uh, Japanese. And we get to the bronze medal, the third most popular target language. Um, again, an interesting image. So now in the US, uh, it's French, same like in Brazil and Russia. In Mexico, it's, um, it's German. In Germany, in Italy, and in France, it's actually Spanish. In Turkey, it's Turkish. And then in the Asian countries, uh, in Japan and in China, it's actually Korean is the third most popular language. Then we're going to take a look at English levels. So the those who learn English, on which level are they? Or basically all English speakers. On Tandem, we have a self-assessment. So it's not based on a test, not yet. You give a self-assessment and you can basically assess yourself in five levels that you speak a language in, from beginner to intermediate to advanced to fluent to native. And here we see in these top 10 countries which group of English speakers is actually the biggest one. In the US, it's not a big surprise, it's the English native speakers. And then in a couple of countries, Mexico, Brazil, Russia, China, and Japan, English beginners are the biggest group. In the European countries, it's a slightly different picture. In France, in Italy, and in Turkey, it's the intermediate speakers. And in Germany, they're actually more fluent speakers than speakers of any of the other groups. The next topic is seasonality. So is there basically a language learning season? This is how it roughly looks for the usage of Tandem. This is data we collected. We started Tandem five years ago. So this is data we collected between 2015 and 2019. And in every year, we saw a pretty similar curve. Um, in the beginning, when you start such a project and you see numbers going up and down, you usually think, did we do something wrong or what did we do right? But it took us actually a couple of years to see that there's a seasonality um, under all these usage numbers, which is very um, constant. So the um, months where we see most usage are January, February. There's definitely some correlation to um, people in the Northern Hemisphere. It's cold, it's winter, and they have maybe more time to use an app like Tandem and learn languages. But of course, also New Year's resolutions in January kick in. I think a lot of language learning apps or other language learning products see always a peak of interest in the first week of January. Then towards April, May, it gets a bit more slow and then only takes up again when it's summer holiday season, either people learning to go on vacation or um, students have more time during their summer vacation. And then we always see a pretty significant drop in October. It's basically when school starts again. It's when people go back to school. And um, then it takes up again when it gets colder towards November and, uh, and December. But of course, everything looks very different in this year, in 2020. This is a graph that shows 
um, the usage of Tandem in different countries, basically since um, mid-January. It's the relative usage. So all these countries, the usage start at the same point, and it shows the relative changes in these countries. And if you're a bit familiar also with um, where lockdowns started and were eased again, these curves actually pretty much show the same picture. So while there are lockdowns, um, people have more interest in language learning or maybe want to do language learning, want to do it for a long time, and now there's an occasion. But there might also be an aspect with a language exchange app like Tandem that when people are in social isolation that they are um, also interested in having uh, social interactions online. So in China, we saw a steep increase in usage when the lockdown happened there in end of January, beginning of February. The next country where we saw this then was uh, Italy, followed by the US and Russia and Brazil a little bit later to the game, also again in line with where these lockdowns took place. And actually in, in Brazil, we are at the highest peak uh, in this whole development right now. In China, it's going down again and kind of normalizing again. Similar in Italy, in the US and Russia, it's also still more or less on these high levels that we saw when the lockdowns uh, came into place. So yeah, 2020 will be a very different year and there will be difficult to take a lot of conclusions from this year into like general seasonality of uh, language learning. Now we come to the next topic, which is learning goals. So this is data that we um, got from a recent study that we did with 15,000 users of Tandem, whom we ask a couple of questions. And one of the things that we wanted to know from them is, why are you learning a language? Why are you using Tandem? And these are the top eight reasons that people gave us. Um, number one is learning a language to live in a foreign country. Number two, meet people from other countries. The third um, goal is improving language skills for work. Number four is a bit more vague. It's practice to not lose your skills. So maybe there's not like a very direct motivation, direct goal right now, more general language learning goal. In fifth position was going on vacation and um, being able to speak the language. In sixth position, passing an exam, getting better grades, basically learning languages for school. Seventh position is improving an accent. And then in last position is talking to a partner and their family. And it's also interesting to look at the differences between countries. You see here the majority of countries actually um, people learn languages to live in a foreign country. It's the case in the US, in Mexico, in Brazil, in France, Germany, and Russia. The difference here is though that in the US, France, and Germany, people mostly learn these languages because they're already living in the, in the country and they want to learn English, French, German to uh, manage their life in that country. While in Mexico, Brazil, and Russia, it's mostly people who are planning to move abroad. Maybe they want to study abroad or live abroad. And this is their motivation to learn a foreign language. Then we have three countries, Turkey, China, and Japan, where people mostly learn um, to um, meet people from other countries. So it's more of a social motivation. And then Italy is the big exception. In Italy, the group is biggest who wants to learn languages um, for work to maybe get a better job or um, to, uh, yeah, to have an advantage in their, in their, in their work life. The, another question that we ask in this survey is, what are the most popular learning resources? What do people use to learn languages? And here we have 12 answers. Number one is um, they like to watch movies in the target language. It's the main resource or their most favorite resource to learn languages. Number two is listening to music in the target language. Number three is watching videos on YouTube to learn languages. Number four is studying with textbooks and or audio courses. Number five is uh, with apps like Duolingo and Bubble. We didn't ask specifically, of course, for Tandem because everybody who got the survey is a user of Tandem. So we asked them for uh, more uh, apps um, that you use to build vocabulary, more like language course app rather than language exchange apps. In sixth position is reading books in the target language, followed by um, language learning blogs. Uh, next one is attending classes at school or university, followed by attending classes at a language school. And then the last three spots is having a local language exchange partner. So on Tandem, you usually learn online um, 
You can also find people in your city. Uh, currently, that's not advised, of course, um, to meet for local language exchanges. Um, but this year, we're specifically asking for uh, having a local exchange partner in real life. Um, in 11th position is having a private tutor. And in last position is um, local language learning meetups is probably in these days also, they basically don't happen. So it's not a surprise. It's not very popular in these days. Here again, the breakup by country. So there's a whole list of countries where the number one answer watching movies is also the number one in those countries. It's in Germany, France, Italy, Turkey, and in China. Then there are three countries where people prefer music over movies. It's in Mexico and in Brazil and also in Russia. Uh, in the US, actually apps are the most popular resource to learn languages. And Japan is the exception here where people like to learn languages with YouTube videos. So YouTube videos was the most popular answer there. Then um, the next stop is communication. So on Tandem, you can have video and audio chats for free. You can also send messages or audio messages and images. And we wanted to check if there are differences between countries in how popular these different ways of communicating, these different ways of learning are. Um, in this uh, map, the size of the flag should indicate how popular uh, the method is. <clears throat> and here, the popularity of video and audio calls is basically the minutes that people spend in video and audio calls from that country divided by the members that we have in this country. So it basically shows in which countries is it especially popular, where there's especially big group of people who like to use video and audio calls. And then the number one here is Germany. So Germans like to do most video and audio calls followed by um, the US, then followed by Italy and Turkey. Next is Russia, then Japan, Mexico, and uh, the last in, the, in this list are Brazil and China. Um, it's quite probable that there's also an, a factor in here that to do a decent video and audio call on Tandem, you need a good internet connection. So countries where people are more likely to use Tandem from Wi-Fi, like Germany is one of those countries, probably a video chat is also more popular than countries like Brazil, for example, where people or more people actually use Tandem uh, with their mobile network and not with their Wi-Fi. And in China, there's a special situation because of the um, Chinese firewall that um, connections to other countries are a bit slower. And so video and audio calls are simply not so uh, doable there. Then we look at um, audio messaging. So sending audio messages back and forth. And this is most popular in the US, uh, followed by Italy, then Turkey, Brazil and France. And then next come Mexico, Germany, and Russia. And it's least popular in China and in Japan. Um, I guess this can have a lot to do with how common it is to send audio messages um, in, in, in other apps as well. Um, but it's actually interesting to maybe dig a bit deeper there and see where these cultural differences uh, actually come from. If any of you have some ideas about these, especially about these cultural differences, I find this a very interesting topic. Um, please share or ask a question about it. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Then we get to um, two groups of languages, uh, sign languages and constructed languages, starting with sign languages. So, here we see the most popular sign languages that people learn on Tandem. So it's basically target language. This is the list of the most popular languages that people learn. Uh, you can learn 12 different sign languages on Tandem, and we actually just launched eight new ones. And um, as you saw in the, um, in the slide before, American Sign Language is not only the 19th most popular language overall, but then, of course, logically also the most popular sign language followed by international sign language, then French sign language, British, Brazilian, Spanish, German, Japanese, Russian, Mexican, uh, Chinese, and Indo-Pakistani. And uh, then yes, also listed the ones that we just launched that you can start learning on Tandem now, which is Auslan, which is Australian sign language, then Austrian sign language, Dutch, Italian, Korean, Malaysian, Polish, and Turkish. Sign language on Tandem, you can, of course, primarily learn when you do video chats. Um, otherwise, it's a bit tricky. 
Um, and they are not amongst the most popular use cases, but American Sign Language is definitely an exception there. And um, it's really great that people use Tandem also to learn sign languages. Then we come to constructed languages. Um, I'm not sure who of you joined one of the crash courses in Esperanto and Klingon that happened uh, this afternoon. Um, on Tandem, you can currently uh, learn five different uh, constructed languages, and here's the list, the most popular, and uh, not very surprising, is Esperanto. Then it's actually pretty tough battle between Valerian and Dothraki. Uh, they're very close, but Valerian is currently ahead of Dothraki. In number four is Tokipona, and then in fifth position is Klingon. And also here we just launched six more uh, constructed languages to learn, Edo, Interlingua, Interslavic, uh, Mandalorian from Star Wars, and then the Tolkien languages, Kenya and Sindarin, so you can start learning those as well on Tandem. Then um, this slide shows the popularity of Esperanto around the world. Again, it's basically um, learners and speakers of Esperanto. Um, uh, then in relation to the overall number of members we have in those countries, so it's basically shows uh, the size of the flag shows in which countries Esperanto learners and speakers are overrepresented in the Tandem community. And um, the, the uh, country where Esperanto is most popular um, is the US, followed by Brazil. Then it's France and Italy next, Mexico, then China and Russia. Germany is um, uh, one of the uh, lower places. And then least popular Esperanto is in Turkey and in Japan. I would also be very interested in explanations here. Um, and if the overall data that exists on the Esperanto community actually is in line with this data that we see on our platform. Um, but this is how the distribution of Esperanto popularity is on Tandem. Then we get to Emoji uh, as the last language that I want to cover. So it was a bit of an idea out of fun to add Emoji as one of the languages you can learn on Tandem. And it proved to be pretty popular, not necessarily that people say they're native in Emoji, also not too many people who learn Emoji, but a lot of people who say they speak Emoji fluently. And of course, it's um, a bit of a joke, but um, there is actually also some language learning value in Emoji and in iconic languages in general. I think there's a talk on Sunday actually about developing an iconic language that goes beyond emoji and is even more useful for language learning because you can express yourself without using words and language. And on this map, I put together how the emoji proficiency is distributed around the world. So it basically shows what percentage of our members in the, uh, in the country say that they either speak or are native in emoji. And um, also an interesting side fact, uh, while in Esperanto uh, on the slide before, I showed that the community is more male. In Emoji, it's actually pretty uh, even. It's 51% uh, female, 50% male. These are rounded numbers, so they don't add up to 100%. Um, and the country where Emoji is much, most loved, most embraced is China, followed by Japan. So the Asian countries are ahead here. The next one then is the US, followed by Turkey then France and, and Brazil is also still pretty popular. Then in uh, Mexico and Russia, not so much anymore. And at the bottom of the list are Italy and my home country, Germany, does not embrace the language of emoji so much. Yeah, so much for my presentation. Um, and I'm very curious about any questions now. If there are any, I think we have plenty of time, 20 minutes. Yes. So um, Albert just put the first question here. I think the idea is also to put it on the screen. And the question is of Tandem's 10 million users, how many are active users and how do you define that? Um, that's, of course, an interesting question, I think, for all apps and startups. Of course, not all of the 10 million users are active every single day. We actually do not publicly state um, what, our, what, uh, what our active number is. Um, and because the problem is actually that there are very different um, ways to compare it. Some apps count you as an active user just if you receive the push notifications. 
other apps count you as active if uh, you did a really meaningful action in the app. And because these numbers are not very comparable and uh, we don't publish them publicly because of course the competition is listening as well. Then the next question is, um, do you plan to develop a desktop version? We actually launched it recently. It doesn't have the full feature set yet, but if you're a user of Tandem, you can go to tandem.net and with your either create an account or um, with your existing account, you can log in. And uh, we're basically in the middle of launching the full messaging feature set. Currently, you can exchange messages, but you cannot send audio messages yet. You can only receive them. You can, since of last week, send images. But very, very soon, you can do the whole feature set of Tandem on the desktop version. It's a, it's, it's a web app, so it works in, in web browser. And uh, yeah, feel free to check it out and send us any feedback. It's still in beta. We haven't really um, made a big news out of it yet because it's still in beta and might still be a bit buggy. If you experience any, uh, any inconveniences, please let us know. But yeah, soon it will have the full feature set, including correcting messages and also sending audio messages. Um, next question is, on these survey results, which information was the most surprising to you or different than what you expected? Um, that's interesting. I think we always knew that a big part of the Tandem community consists of expats, so people who live in a country to learn the language there, and people who um, learn languages to um, basically with a plan to live in a different country. But we wouldn't have thought that this group is actually so big. Um, maybe it comes a bit, you always have your personal biases and in the Germany or the Western world in general, we mostly learn languages uh, for traveling or maybe for work or maybe just for fun. But um, in the Tandem community, which is distributed all across the world, the main reason why people learn languages is because they actually want to make a change in their life because they want to uh, live in a different place or already living in a place and want to be able to manage their life better. That was, I wouldn't say surprising, but we were surprised by how big this part of our community is. Next question is, could the preferred means of communication be related to age? Yeah, I mean, just in very general, the Tandem community, I don't know numbers of other language learning products, but our community is probably relatively young. The um, average Tandem user is between 18 and 25. I think the most common age is actually 19. Um, so that could be related that um, people in a certain age are more used to different styles of communicating. Um, but this is more like overall numbers. Uh, we don't necessarily see that older users prefer video and audio chats more than younger users, but our overall community is relatively young. Next question is, will the slides be available later? I actually don't know, but this presentation, which includes all the slides, will definitely be available, so you can definitely go through the presentation, um, but I'm not sure if the Polyglot Gathering will make the slides available as well, or will request them and make them available. Uh, if you have a specific question about a slide, also don't hesitate uh, to contact me. I'm also part of the Facebook networking group. I'm also on the Telegram chat, so you can also contact me directly there. Next question is, what percentage of your users, the users in the sample are students? I would need to look it up to actually give the exact number. Um, but as you saw in one of the slides, learning languages to improve your grades or pass an exam is um, not the most popular one. So if the students um, is meant that people who actually go to school, so not college, but to school, uh, this group is probably not that big. My guess would be around 5%. Um, but I could definitely look this up uh, if you're interested. Um, if we count college students as well, then the group is much bigger and it's probably more around 30 to 40%. Then the next question is, how do you decide to add a new language? That's a very interesting question because we just went through a process which took quite some time to decide on new languages to add to Tandem. We just added 140 new languages to add, uh, to, to basically cover 300 languages now. So it's a mix of things. The main uh, input we get is uh, if you write to us and complain that you're missing a certain language, uh, we have a spe specific form that we will guide to, uh, you to then. And we're basically collecting all the answers there. And then once a year or so, make a list of the most requested languages. Then of course, we also check them and check 
how many people actually speak them, how much use there is, um, how many um, native speakers there are, in which countries they are spoken, um, and then basically make a short list and um, decide based on these criteria. We want to, of course, cover all the main languages that are spoken out there in the world, but also those that specific users request because they would like to practice them on tandem. Um, there are, I think, around 7,000 languages out there and we currently cover 300. The reason is mainly that uh, we don't want to, the screen where you select languages to be like uh, overwhelming with like too many different languages. Um, but also we basically cover, I would guess, 97, 98% of the needs out there of languages with this 300 languages. But if after this language update, you are still missing a language, please um, contact us and submit it. And then we're gonna look at it again when we update the list of languages the next time. The next question is, what programming languages are you using for analyzing the data? Python, SQL? Yes, uh, both of that. Um, but we also simply use uh, data analysis programs starting with um, Excel and uh, other tools that we use and also our uh, analytics tools. So uh, most of the data that I showed is actually from Tandem usage and that's based on our own analytics suite, which basically um, shows us uh, what users are doing on Tandem, not on an individual level, but on these aggregated levels so we can see what percentage of people do video chats, for example. Then next question is, I have experienced that a lot of people, especially women, don't reply to me. What is the reason? I wrote them only appropriate messages. Can you give us some tips what the first message could con should contain? Yeah, that's a good question. That's something that we also would um, are trying to improve all the time, basically the reply rates on Tandem. It is definitely statistically the case that men write more messages to women than the other way around which um, leads to women more likely to be overwhelmed with the number of messages they receive and then more likely to reply to those. Um, it's a good start definitely to write appropriate messages. I definitely want to encourage you uh, with this. And uh, I think the first message should be beyond a hi or a hey. Um, I would always recommend to introduce yourself very quickly, not in a long uh, essay, but just very quickly and basically suggest um, what you would like to learn and what you could help with and basically suggest what the language exchange uh, could or should be about uh, in your eyes. Then the next question, with the wide variety of options available today, do you see language learning technologies as sustainably profitable for future development? Um, I think it's, it's, it's a good question. I think the reason why there are so many technologies out there is because there is a market. But of course, just like in any other field of business, um, there are a few um, bigger companies who actually can do it profitably. And then there are people trying to uh, create better products and sometimes they succeed and sometimes they don't succeed. But a better product doesn't only, of course, mean that it's... Uh, that it's um, more sound in terms of how it teaches you languages, but also the marketing has to be good as well. Uh, so to spread the word so people actually uh, hear that, uh, that the product exists in the first place. Um, but I think actually that the number of options more speaks for that there is a big market rather than uh, there's too much competition or anything like this. There's rarely something like too much competition. And the number of people who learn languages, if you look at like broader statistics that are out there, is growing and will continue to grow. And the number of people who learn languages online rather than in language learning schools is also growing for years and will continue to grow. The um, number of people who learn on mobile is even smaller. So there's actually a lot of um, room to grow for products that are language learning products that are digital and are on mobile. And probably the current situation even enhances that um, where it's, it's impossible to go to a language school, for example, uh, for the time being. Um, then the next question is, what countries have the most pro membership users? What countries have very few? So to explain, um, we monetize Tandem with a pro membership. Uh, the basic functionality and basically everything I also presented in this presentation here is for free. You can send audio messages, video and audio chats. 
but there are a couple of um, functions that are um, you need a pro membership for, for example, finding people in your city or um, translating more than five messages a day or three messages a day uh, in chats is also a paid feature. And um, the pro membership is actually more or less in line with um, where we see um, our users. Uh, there's a few countries where we have um, exceptionally high number of people who are paying. It's the case in Japan, for example, comes to my mind, but also in the US. And then there are other countries where it's below average, Russia and Brazil, for example. It's pretty much if you look at would look at the famous Big Mac index that shows you how much a Big Mac costs in countries as a um, sign of uh, what people are able or willing to spend in their life uh, based on their income pretty much correlates with that. So in countries where people have more disposable income, they also tend to spend more money on mobile apps in general, probably, but definitely on tandem. Then the next question, what about language versus regional dialect? For example, do you offer modern standard Arabic, standard Arabic, as well as regional dialects like Egyptian, Hochdeutsch and Schweizerdeutsch? Yeah, that's also a very interesting um, discussion. I'm not a linguist myself, so I'm mostly relying on uh, doing research there or talking to people who are. But of course, there's a lot of discussion about what's a language, what's a dialect, what's a variant, what's a topolect. And what we usually do on Tandem is that we don't support dialects, um, but we do support different languages and sometimes also variants. I'm the first one to admit that we are not super um, consistent there, but it also depends on which uh, dialect or languages are, are requested by users. So for example, we differentiate between Hochdeutsch, High German, and Schweizerdeutsch, um, but we only offer one modern standard, standard Arabic. Um, there are also reasons that lie more in the area of um, not making it more difficult than necessary for you to find an exchange partner. So would we, for example, separate between the different um, regional dialects of Arabic or the different forms of Spanish, which we all know can be very different, Chilean Spanish from Mexican Spanish or Spanish Spanish. And then in these countries, people would pick their regional dialect it would be harder for others to find them because most people who want to learn Spanish probably in the probably at least when they're starting don't really care if someone is from Costa Rica or Colombia to help them. So we would make it harder for people in those countries to be found by enabling them to pick their regional variant. Um, so there are quite a few considerations going into this. Again, if you see if you're missing a dialect or see like why do you separate between German and Schweizerdeutsch but not between this and that please write us or let me know and we can look into this and then uh, add it or, or change it. Um, next question. Oh yeah, also another interesting topic. Hey, would it be possible to add Portuguese with a Portuguese flag, please? Um, yeah, I think in the very beginning when we started Tandem and had this idea to represent languages with flags, we didn't actually, we were a bit naive to see what we are actually getting ourselves into. Now there are certain screens in the app, for example, the one where you can look at for exchange partners where languages are represented with flags, so it would be difficult to remove them again. But this is one of the interesting topics that um, people don't feel represented, represented with the specific flag uh, and their language. So one of the rules we usually have is that we represent a language with the flag where this language is spoken most. So Brazil is bigger than Portugal, for example. Um, but we also make exceptions. Uh, Spanish does not have the Mexican flag, but the Spanish flag is basically based on our testing, what people understand and would connect to the language. Uh, there are some examples, those uh, some exceptions, though. So, for example, if you use the app in Portugal, you will actually see the Portuguese flag. So we make some uh, exceptions in some countries to adjust it to locals not being confused. But yeah, in the rest of the world, currently Portuguese is uh, is represented with the with the Brazilian flag. Next question, do people usually speak to one language partner or multiple? Um, so the members of Tandem that we see thriving and actually having uh, meaningful language exchanges usually talk to more than one person. It's between two and five. There are also people who talk to even more and are very, very active on Tandem, but between two and five seems to be a good number or seems to be a good indicator for someone who is happy and thriving on tandem with their language learning. 
Um, a lot of the learning on Tandem happen, happens asynchronously, so not in video chats where you have to be on and at the same time, but actually in with audio messages and images and text messages. And for that reason, it's actually really nice to have multiple partners because maybe one is at the other side of the world and sleeping right now, you can talk to another or the other way around. And um, to actually have a, have a conversation with, I would say, two to five partners, a consistent conversation seems to be what people go about on Tandem. Um, the next question, what are some of your favorite Tandem success stories? Oh, wow, there are so many, and it's really hard to pick single ones. But what, what's always touching to us is when uh, people do not only learn languages on Tandem, but also make friends when they um talk to people in different countries then go to travel there and visit their partners um also whenever we we get messages like um somebody saying they've talked to a foreigner for the first time in their life usually from countries where it's not so easy to travel it's also very encouraging um and yeah basically everyone who tells us that tandem helped them a lot with their language learning and helping the real language i think the role that Tandem plays in most people's language learning journey is not necessarily the one of being the app that teaches you most efficient, has the best, best curriculum because we don't have one at all. But where Tandem helps you is with the motivation side of language learning, which in my opinion is maybe even more important than the uh, curriculum one. Um, usually people don't give up learning languages because they had used the wrong app or used the wrong curriculum or had the wrong teachers because they lose motivation. And this is where Tandem helps. Then the next question is, how much does it cost? Is it free or are there some variants of membership? Um, there's a fixed price for the membership, but there are different price tiers depending on if you do Tandem for one month, like a monthly subscription or a three month subscription or an annual subscription. The prices also vary, uh, there are variations by country a little bit. So um, if you check in the app, you will see the price that's uh, currently for you. Also, we have discounts from time to time. So if you are eligible for a discount, you will see a different price. But they are not different variants of membership in terms of the, uh, the feature set. Then the next one is not a question. Sorry, Anerata. Portuguese from Portugal is very different when speaking has different vocabulary. Yeah, um, of course, um, uh, that's the case. And um, it's a bit goes into this direction again. Is it a different language or is it a variant or is it a dialect? And I know the case can be made. It is very different. Um, but the question is always how easy is it is for a Portuguese, Portu Portuguese speaker from Portugal and a Portuguese speaker from Brazil to understand each other. There's a term for it, uh, intelligibility. I'm not sure if it's the right term. Uh, and basically, Yes, uh, it's different vocabulary, but usually people from these two countries uh, understand each other. And this is the criteria why, uh, why we, for now, have not chosen to separate the two uh, from each other. It seems this is the last question. And I think we are also pretty good on time. So um, yeah, thanks everybody for joining. As I said before, you can reach me in the Telegram group. You can. Um, Find me in the Facebook networking group if you have further questions. I'm very interested to hear from you. And yeah, thanks a lot for, for listening and watching and uh, hope to see you online in the next, in the next days. Bye-bye.